Um, next, we're going to have, uh, by Representative Macbeth, um, 7578, and um, Representative Macbeth's uh, legislation around geoengineering that we've heard um, previously as well. Thank you, um, Rep. Macbeth. Please. Thank you, Chairman, members of the committee. This, I believe, is the third year that I've submitted this legislation. And I think since the, the first year that I did submit it, certainly I've gotten a lot more correspondence, and I believe you probably have as a committee. I'm not going to delve into all of it because there's somebody here that I think can give a lot more information on the geoengineering. And then also, if any of you have questions, we have Representative Price that I think has been following this years before I even looked up in the sky and realized something was going on. So certainly we have him to fall back on, too. But I would certainly turn this over to, to Tom, who's here to testify. Certainly. Um, and do you, did you, well, I guess if we have other questions, you're going you're gonna to stay so we can, if we had some other question after he goes or something I'll like wait, that. I'll wait, yes. Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Rep. So then before we ask, if we have any questions of Rep. Macbeth after, we, we can certainly get to her, but um, at the same time, let's let uh, Thomas Loisel, is that how you pronounce it, sir? Uh, yeah, Loisel. Loisel. Yep. Welcome again, sir. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much for making this an issue, because it is a very important issue. Um, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an expert. I am, however, a lifelong Rhode Islander. I'm a family man, a businessman. Uh, I have three sons. They're all in Rhode Island. Uh, my oldest is a, uh, a veteran of, of uh, the Air Force, military intelligence, and Iraqi war veteran who settled in Johnston, just bought a house and got married, and they're working on you know, bringing grandbabies into the world. And obviously, so I have a tremendous concern for the quality of life in Rhode Island, as uh, my other sons are here. Uh, you know, as well, you know, finishing up school and so forth. And um, so I started out with this whole process as a major skeptic. Okay, so many, many years ago, when someone told me about this, I didn't believe it. And then, you know, I started looking into it, researching it, and then you know, kind of opening up my eyes. And I found that, you know, you know this is really happening. And when you, when, when you look at the history, uh, you know, cloud seeding began back in the 1830s via balloon. And when you look back in the 1950s and 60s, when there were drought conditions in various areas across the United States, they advertised in the, in the newspaper. And you could see, you know, uh, newspaper clippings. They're, they're all over the place saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. Well, they don't tell us about what they're doing anymore. And we all know that, you know, flight schedules work the same way as bus schedules and train schedules. Uh, if you travel at all in business, you know that if you, if you, you know, miss a certain flight at Baltimore, Washington, you can, you know, an hour and a half later, there's another flight that you can pick up, right? So when you start a, a day that has a, a, a you know, sim similar kind of outlook with a blue skies and regular clouds in the sky, and you see, you know, it's, it stays pretty much like that all day, you don't see many jets in the sky at all, you know, and, and that's a Tuesday, for example, you know, and, 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 you know, anywhere in Rhode Island, or especially right here in the state house. In fact, I've seen some advertisements and different things where I can see <coughs> trails, right over the state house, and I'm saying, you know, these folks should be able to see this when they're walking right out the door. And so you, 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 you have the next Tuesday, all of a sudden, now you're getting inundated and you're seeing jets all day long. Uh, my wife's office, her window is right there, and so she'll tell me, don't, don't look outside, you know? And so I guess awareness of all this has been raised, uh, uh, you know, quite considerably as of late, um, but the question of whether it's happening, or not, it's, it's really, I mean, it's over. I mean, you go back to the U.S. Senate congressional hearings of 1978, where they're talking about the fact that they've been doing it for over 30 years. So this has been going on for a lot longer, but it's just in the last five to ten years that it has increased significantly. And it is not only affecting the environment, but it's affecting us. So can I just redirect you, less, probably a little bit less on the, the sort of history and instead about the legislation? I just want to, because... Every, anyway, again, everybody's working on other pieces. Oh, it's my first time sure. speaking. Oh no, no, sure. And, and I, I, and again, I have also just. Can I ask? Do you have any written testimony as well afterwards, or, or if, I, if you want I, after I, the I, fact? Well, I provided some flyers. Yeah, and I saw and, those. And yeah. All I have, really, honestly, is just notes that I yeah, wrote but, down. But, to. but after, but afterwards, you certainly email us that, and we'll make sure we get it to the committee members also. But I saw because I don't want to limit anything that you want to. But I just, if you just to keep it more to the content of the bill, that would be helpful. Sure. Okay. All right. So I think I think what the bill does is it allows us to, you know, kind of keep track of what's going on. It forces whoever is doing this, because we don't have a clear understanding of, of you know, the parties involved, that they have to get permission. I mean, you know, 
Rhode Island is a, a sovereign republic within the United States of America. They can't just spray, you know, stuff in the sky over our heads. And uh, this is the third year. Unfortunately, in the last two, two times when I was traveling, actually, it was actually in the en route from Florida, and you had a, a woman from the uh, Rhode Island Audubon Society, a senior policy director, who spoke about it, Eugenia Marks. I spoke with her in a conversation the day after that, and I asked her why she testified against and she said it should be handled at the federal level. And I, and I don't necessarily disagree with that, but it's just not, I think it's being done at the federal level. That's, that's the issue without our consent. And then the other, the other thing that I, I, she was concerned about that first bill saying that it didn't allow for experimentation. And I asked her point blank, do you want them to be able to experiment on us from the sky? Um, you know, the bottom line is, is there's no such thing as bioavailable aluminum. But, you know, if, if, you know, I wish I had, you know, the funds to pay for all of you and all your families to have all your hair and your blood uh, samples tested and the ground soil and the water around your homes tested. And you would see, you know, that it's, it, it, they're off the charts now. Okay. And all of this stuff is bioaccumulated. And, um, you know, some of the ingredients we're talking about are all, they're all harmful. Aluminum crosses the blood-brain barrier. Uh, basically, fluoride is a... a, 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 a a byproduct of the manufacture of aluminum, and they have an affinity together. So we're fluoridated, um, well, most part for the state is fluoridated. So now, when we do get that uptake of this bioavailable aluminum from the particulates that they're spraying, then it does have the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier, and it's, it's being blamed for, you know, Alzheimer's and dementia and things like that. But one of the bigger issues is the barium. Barium is an immunosuppressant. It, it basically, it re, it, you know, it reduces your, your body's ability to fight micro malignancies and take out the trash and everything else. And so what's happening there is, is you're compromising your mitochondrial DNA, you're shortening the life expectancy, you're, you know, there's all of these things that are happening, and they're happening to us and they're happening to the environment. Uh, in Cumberland, where I live, where we built our second house there 22 years ago, we've noticed a tremendous, you know, degradation of, you know, and the trees, like in the monastery grounds, for example, the, the outside of the trees, the inside of the trees, and you have a storm like you had last night, uh, you know, if we go walking this weekend, if it's a nice day, I guarantee you we're going to see all kinds of trees that have, you know, you know, and, and, and I'm not the only person that's seeing these things, obviously, I'm the only person that showed them to testify, but I think that the, what this bill does is it satisfies, you know, uh, the need for us to know exactly what they're doing, when they're doing it, have them get you know get permission and then decide whether we're just going to outlaw <laughs> this stuff over the if, if we have the power to do so you know because if the federal government comes and says all right this is something that we're doing and they can't give us plausible reason you know for it then you know we have to fight back as best as we can because it's our children it's our families it's our it's, it's everything it's our environment here Rhode Island's a beautiful place I mean uh, I was happy to know that uh, Representative Price is aware of this before I was ever aware of it. But the fact of the matter is, is his district in Exeter, Hopkinton, and Richmond, beautiful, beautiful area. And it's what Rhode Island, you know, it's, it's a good part of what, you know, Rhode Island has to offer. And for us to compromise that or allow it to be compromised by, you know, foreign parties, it's, it's, it's unconscionable. So. Thank you. Any, any questions for um, <clears throat> Mr. Langlois? I have one, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Hall. Uh, are we speaking about the comm trails from uh, airlines that pass through? Yeah, it's, it's actually you know, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering or solar radiation management. And um, I have a bunch of resources that I would like, if, 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 if I'm allowed to maybe email members of the committee, I can email you some links and some information, including you know numbers and stats on the, on the blood and hair samples, with the barium, strontium, aluminum. Please do. Uh, Please do. And, Not to uh, cut you off, but also there, there, I also, if anyone is uh, interested, I have a uh, a, a, a DVD that uh, that I can leave here and you can share it. Um, but the gentleman that uh, produced this is uh, Dane Wigington, and he is um, involved with legislatures across the United States. He has a Saturday call with lawyers and folks and, and others, and they're trying to figure out a way, you know, to to, to deal with this issue. And so he's working with a lot of, and he has invited any legislators from the state of Rhode Island who would like to participate in the call to do so. You know, it's, it's you can, you know, just be kind of a non, just listening in and hear what they're, what they're trying to do. You know, if they can't get the legislation done, then they want to approach 
you know, uh, nonprofit environmental groups to set them up as a plaintiff for a lawsuit, like a clean water action, like, you know, looking at the, the, the amount of chemicals and, and, and saying, all right, this is not normal. Again, big difference between finding natural aluminum, you know, uh, deposits in the soil and water versus bioavailable that can, you know, taken into the body and doing a lot of damage. So, thank, thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Hall. Any other questions? Representative Regenberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, more of a comment, and I made this last year, but I just want to say I, I appreciate some of the, the findings of fact uh, in this legislation. Um, and I, I personally don't know and, and haven't seen much evidence of whether geoengineering is, is happening currently, but I do know that, that there are serious people having real conversations about trying to do this, and it's a testament to how, uh, to what a crisis we have gotten uh, at this point with climate change and, and what the consequences are that people are, are having serious conversations about doing extreme things like this. Um, and so I, I appreciate in the, in the findings of fact <coughs> laying out that, um, that that is an insane answer. There are ways that we can respond to climate change. There are ways we need to respond to climate change. Uh, we need to get to a uh, clean energy economy. We need to get resilient. Um, but we can't sort of hack the climate system by going around and thinking that as humans we can use technology to, to, to fix this and change the global climate. And, and, there, and if we tried that, there would be significant consequences. Well, if you can speak with Dane, he would speak with you. He's very passionate about this. He's been doing it all on his own expense. Uh, if you spoke with him, he would, he would kind of give you more technical information than I have, um, but also present it in a way where you would understand that uh, we're talking about a cataclysm here. We're talking about, you know, the, we, we've got, uh, you know, one catalyst after another cataclyst, a uh, catalyst rather, that ultimately is going to be a cataclysm if it's not dealt with. And he's not a um, global warming, climate change skeptic. Uh, uh, he's not saying that climate change isn't happening. He is saying it is happening, but we are also making it a lot worse by trying to mitigate it. And we're also destroying our, our environment and we're destroying our, our, our bodies with the, with the chemicals that the spraying. Thank you. And, and do email us also the information about the, the call that you were talking about as well. Any other questions? Represent Price. Uh, yes, thanks for coming in. Uh, nice talking with you the other day. Um, it's not so much a question, but more of a comment, um, kind of confirming what was said in testimony. It's, uh, it's kind of a tough subject for people to get their uh, heads wrapped around. And, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but if you do, it, uh, you know, I've been following this for quite some time, and, and if you, you can actually pull up some uh, government documents that, that confirm that there are, uh, there are geoengineering programs being conducted probably worldwide, not so much that, like you had said, the woman said that it probably should be addressed on a federal level, which I could see why she would say that, because it's probably more of a federal issue because it's so nationwide, but if we just address it on a state issue, as a states could get, get together, and as states they could address it on a federal issue. But um, I, have, I have information that I could, I could supply to the committee. Um, this Air Force document, it's uh, it's called Owning the Weather 2025. It's from actually from the Air Force. There's some uh, uh, stuff from the Department of Accountability, which which I know that when we go through committees, we always like to have facts that we can we could uh, research and government uh, data. And also, I have a 300-page uh, uh, research document, which kind of gives the history of the. Uh, um, the program and where it currently is and where they project that it will go. So it's definitely should be up for conversation and um, I think that's one of the reasons that we're bringing this up so that it at least comes up to uh, be discussed and, and come to light even though it is like the elephant in the room when you when you can see it, it is. in operation if you choose to look for it. And, uh, you don't want to believe it. So just, it's, it's a tough one to wrap your hands around. And spraying, you know, stuff in the sky that's harmful for me and my, my environment. Right, and they, that's yeah. Not happening, right? But you have to get past that. You've got to believe your own eyeballs. I've got pictures, 
videos, films. I, you know, he's got more stuff than I could ever supply. But I'm going to send emails out with links and everything else. And I'm also going to, like I said, uh, you know, provide the information for his Saturday call. He does a call at 12:30 Saturdays, and like meets with legislators and lawyers and folks from around the country, kind of how do we deal with this issue? Because it, 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 it is, it's the elephant in the room. How do we deal with this? Okay. Thank you, and thank you, Rep. Price. You certainly can. Uh, um, uh, we'll we'll try to make this available for committee members as well. The, the things absolutely anybody that wants them, I could email them, or I could get hard copies for you. So, um, uh, very interesting. Uh, ab no, absolutely, it's a, it's a really interesting topic here along the way. I, I sent something to Rep. Macbeth that I saw that had sort of actually sort of things on both sides of it. It, it was interesting to see the sort of both sides of the piece. But again, I, I like Rep. Regenberg said. I mean, it's just disappointing that we're looking at these kinds of, that, that people are even seriously considering these kinds of solutions no matter what. I, I just think it's disappointing we really have other alternatives to get, get to where we need to get to uh, around climate change. Um, so uh, that said, uh, uh, that concludes the hearing on um, 7, I'll get the bill number right here, 7578 by Representative Macbeth. Uh, did anybody have questions for Rep. Macbeth? Let me ask. Okay. Uh, no. Um, that concludes the hearing on 7578, and uh, I'll gladly accept a motion to adjourn. That's moved by Rep. Philippi, and uh, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, folks.